Hi everybody, um, this is a recording of a presentation I gave at the National Energy Efficiency Conference at the end of May uh, this year, 2022, down in Melbourne. Um, I was in a session that was focused on retrofitting Australia's housing stock. And I really, um, it's a passion of mine and there's a lot of confusion um, out there in the Australian industry about uh, how difficult and how expensive it is to retrofit houses. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be difficult or expensive. There's a lot that can be done to help people with small budgets. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about me. I run a business called Lighthouse Architecture and Science. Um, we're actually Canberra's largest residential architecture firm now, um, but I'm not an architect, I am a scientist. And I came to this space from a retrofitting background. So 14 years ago, um, I bought a blower door and a thermal camera and I started testing houses um, and retrofitting. So I was physically doing the retrofitting initially too. So I got a lot of hands-on experience um, back then. Um, and since then, we've done hundreds of homes. And then I, I ended up running this architecture business where we're integrating the science with the architecture. Um, but unfortunately, um, that's what, what I've become more known for is that, that architecture work integrating science because they're the projects that have the beautiful pictures taken of them. You know, uh, images of insulation and draft ceiling are not quite as attractive. Anyway, I'm here to set the record straight. It's not all about deep retrofit and architecture and science. There is a lot that can be done with science on its own, and it's not rocket science, it's building science. Why should you listen to me? Um, as I said before, I've done a lot of um, testing and retrofitting myself, but I also applied it to my own project. So this is my previous home here in Canberra. I moved back to Canberra in 2007 and bought um, this house that had Good orientation, good bones, but it was the worst house I had ever lived in, in terms of its thermal performance. Um, appalling in summer, we had to move the kids downstairs, no one could sleep upstairs, and just freezing in winter. We developed asthma and coughs. And anyway, it was, it was shocking. Um, so I applied what I'd learned, plus some significant architecture to improve the functionality of this home. So it was back then a $300,000 project. But again, the energy efficiency measures were a small fraction of that. They, the $300,000 went on structural stuff and reconfiguration and new kitchens and bathrooms and all those things that so many Australians are spending money on each year. Um, so that was a, a huge transformation. You can read about that in the Your Home Guide. But on to what I'm really here to talk about today is the retrofit range. And it was um, Rob Murray Leach that got me to stop and recognise that there are these three sort of levels of retrofit, and, and I've actually done work in each of these levels or at each of these levels. So there's what we've coined um, as the rehab retrofit, which is the really basic stuff, um, which could really help the most vulnerable people in our community and renters potentially. Um, then there's what I call regular retrofit, um, which is probably most of the people who come to us for our standalone science work, so as well as the integrated science and architecture, we offer separate science services. So we do have people come to, coming to us wanting our testing services and then advice on how to best um, spend their limited budgets to improve their houses thermally. And I am all about bang for buck. It's got to stack up. Um, so that's regular fit. Um, I'll give you an example of all of these. And then there's the deep retrofit and renovation. And this is where the horrible confusion is occurring and where a couple of our projects have actually been used to undermine the message I really want to send. Um, it doesn't have to be hard and expensive, yet we've had a couple of high profile projects that have had budgets in the order of $400,000 and more, where we have completely transformed the home um, thermally but also in terms of functionality and aesthetics and completely modernise the home. Now, people around Australia, thousands of projects happen each year where people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on their home to get their new kitchen, their new bathroom, their new joinery, their new deck, their new media room, their, you know, whatever. The fixtures, finishings, fittings, appliances, um, and outdoor areas, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent on that and a lot of people miss the opportunity during that process to improve the energy efficiency of their home. 
to insulate walls that aren't insulated, to do some draft sealing, to think about ventilation, and maybe some, some double glazing. I always stress that's further down the track. Um, so what I'm trying to say is um, the retrofit stuff is a fraction of that cost. Um, and we've got to stop telling people it's hard and difficult and expensive to do um, to improve their houses thermally. But we've also got to focus on those people who are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on their home and not doing the thermal stuff. Anyway, I'll stop ranting. This is a much longer version of the presentation I gave at the conference. That was only 10 minutes. I had to control myself and not rant as much. You're getting the uh, deluxe ranting version. First of all, I want to talk to you about some work I did um, 10 years ago now with the ACT government and low income households. Uh, and this is to talk about the rehab retrofit work. So we worked with 11 different households. Um, and I'm actually going to cut to the chase and show you the results we achieved. And we had budgets of, um, I don't think any of them were over $10,000 in total. Most of them were closer to the $5,000 mark. And we achieved an average of a 22% reduction in the winter energy use, which equates to, well, back then, equated to $270, which is significant for these households, and it would be more now, of course. Um, and that was equated to 18.44 tonnes of CO2. No surprise, draft ceiling was consistently the most cost-effective retrofit measure. Uh, insulation and good window dressings also significantly reduced um, energy use and increased the comfort um, in these case study homes. So I'm just going to show you one example that um, will always stick with me. This is not a very exciting image, but this is an aerial view of a little house in suburban Canberra. North is straight up the page. Um, a single mum with two small children uh, were living in this home and really uh, doing it tough. The kids had constant respiratory issues. Um, it was miserable, really, really miserable. The only north facing window in the house um, it was next to the dining table and the curtains were kept closed. The kids were sleeping in the south, the southernmost bedroom, which had the two external walls. Um, so before we actually did any retrofit, we helped this family by um, pointing out to mum that if we moved the kids from that corner bedroom into a central bedroom that only had one external wall, then the, the room was going to be much easier to keep warm and much more temperature stable. So that was instantly helped them. And then we moved the dining table um, into what was being used as the family or play space, opened up those curtains, showed her how the winter sun flooded in and created the kids' play space in that area. So two really simple things. Um, before we even start retrofitting, um, we can actually show people how to use their houses better. So the, in this house, I think the next slide shows it better. Oh, that just tells you about the household. Um, what we did with all of these projects was um, do the thermal performance modelling. So the NATO's modelling, um, great tool. I use it as a um, design tool. Uh, with the architecture work, but we actually also use it to inform our retrofit and to help um, uh, people understand the bang for buck they're going to get for different measures. So we modelled the house and we knew that with draft ceiling, topping up the ceiling insulation and installing wall insulation, we could take it from 2.9 star to 4.7 star, and that equates to a 40% reduction in predicted, um, predicted energy use for heating and cooling. So we did all that and then uh, another team of people, so it wasn't me and my team, but other people came in and did that. Um, we also looked at the air leakage rate before and after draft sealing. We were able to show that we could reduce, we reduced the rate of air leakage by nearly half. And then we looked at the electricity usage um, in autumn and in winter um, following retrofit, and it would have been reduced um, very significantly. 42% over winter. So that equated to savings of um, over $500. What are we at? $550 um, for this household, which is huge. You know, it makes, that makes a massive difference. Um, so this is the sort of stuff I'm talking about. And this is, well, this is the stuff I want to stress. This can be done to so many Australian houses. 
Um, but there are so many people in the industry, the housing industry, the architecture industry, and the real estate industry who don't know this um, and are not motivated to uh, spread this message. Um, so I need everyone watching this uh, to spread the message. Two, let's talk about regular retrofit. So this is a classic example of the sort of projects um, we typically do um, at Lighthouse. So we'll have clients contact us. For starters, they can afford our testing services and they've got a, a budget. Sometimes it's only 10 or $15,000. Some might have $50,000, some might have $100,000. Um, but they want to focus on thermally upgrading their house, but they don't want to renovate it. They don't want to reconfigure it. They're not after new kitchens and new bathrooms. They're motivated about thermal stuff. So this family came to us. Um, they have a lovely um, 1940s double brick cottage um, in the inner north of Canberra that had been extended to the rear um, in the 1980s. So the cottage, you can see the front of the cottage there. Um, the cottage faces the street and then the extension pops out to the rear where it's got quite nice northerly orientation and good solar access. But um, the couple were approaching retirement and um, were really sick of being incredibly cold and uncomfortable in their home. And they decided that the only way they were going to be comfortable in their retirement was to actually um, design and build a small secondary residence in their backyard and move into that and rent out the front house. So that's why they actually contacted us. And so we went on site, myself and one of my architects, and had a look. But while I was there, I said, you know, please can I, let me show you the potential in your existing um, house. And um, they were pretty skeptical, but they, um, they were willing to have a, a look. So I convinced them to let us come in and do some testing. We did some air leakage testing, we did thermal imaging of the insulation. We found massive air leakage, particularly in the new part of the home, well, the relatively new part, the 1980s extension. We found insulation glaps, all the classic things we find um, in Canberra homes and in other homes around Australia. We did thermal performance modelling. So again, I showed them that the house um, could be taken from 5.6, theoretically 5.6. It was actually quite air leaky, so not performing at 5.6 but we could get it up to a performance level of 7.2 stars. And that equates, again, to a significant reduction in actual energy use and improvement in comfort. So they went ahead and did it, where they worked with our suggestions, um, with uh, draft sealing and topping up the gaps in the insulation and installing insulation in the double brick cottage. And they experienced an immediate difference. Um, they did it at the end of 2019. And then we had the summer, summer Geddon, I call it, where we had the incredible heat waves and were shrouded in smoke here in the ACT. And they could not believe how cool their house was and how smoke free their house was. And they hadn't actually contacted us because they were concerned about summer, they were concerned about winter. So they were already blown away um, by the summer impact. And then the next winter, um, they saved um, $300 on, in each of the winter, the quarters that corresponded, um, overlapped with winter. So in their first year, they were already saving $750. Um, they'd spent $15,000. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, that's a poor return on investment. But the massive improvement in their comfort and their health um, made it very worthwhile. And, and clearly it is going to pay itself off. Um, and as a result, they haven't built a secondary residence and they've now got a community um, urban farm happening in their backyard, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, their major motivation for contacting us was actually comfort and health. Um, and they didn't actually expect to save um, much money. So that was actually a bit of a nice uh, surprise. And, you know, in fact, we saved them probably four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars by not building another house. Um, this is a fantastic project. This is my deep um, retrofit and renovation example. But sadly, this is the project that has garnered a lot of attention um, and in particular, a Guardian article that said, or strongly implied, that to take this house from 3.3, or whatever it was, to start with up to 7.6, um, it'll be on the next slide, that that cost $400,000. 
That's not true. <laughs> $400,000 was spent on this project, but it was extended. It had new kitchens, new bathrooms, new laundry. It was basically stripped inside, so completely modernised because it was in a bad, it was in bad, a bad state. But of course, we didn't miss the opportunity to insulate everything very thoroughly, um, to draft seal really well, to convert from gas heating, gas hot water, and gas cooking to electric everything. Um, and we also installed double glazing. So the retrofit measures were probably about $75,000 of the $400,000 budget. Um, so when we talk about deep retrofit and renovation, projects like these, it's only a fraction of the cost that is spent on the energy efficiency measures. Um, I'll walk you through this one really quickly. There are, I've done previous presentations about it and there's quite a lot of information on our website. The crack a little project, a daggy 1980s cottage that had been completely turned around. Um, again, we applied our usual approach. We did the thermal performance modelling using Natter's software. I used Burr's Pro. Um, we air leakage tested with thermal imaged. We uh, went all electric, which of course everyone should do, and is a big part of helping um, you know those low income households um, uh, improve their energy efficiency and reduce their bills. Is, is um, switching from gas to electric. Um, just to prove to you that it works, prior to the renovation, they were using about 40.4 kilowatt hours um, per day from July to October. Um, the average daily consumption dropped to 15.6 over that period. That's a 61% reduction, um, massive. And a typical uh, Canberra family home uses about four times that amount. Um, and the clients, again, are really... Uh, pleasantly surprised. They knew they were going to get a good result, but everyone um, is surprised by just uh, how much difference it makes. Um, some before and afters. Everyone likes a before and after uh, picture. Um, but the main message is don't be distracted by the pretty pictures. All of that superficial stuff, all those pretty pictures, yes, those things can add up to hundreds of thousands of dollars of dollars, we want to focus on the energy efficiency measures, which can you know, be achieved with budgets of $5,000 through to $75,000. So um, it's not hard. Uh, it doesn't have to be hard. Some houses are harder than, harder than others. It doesn't have to be expensive. There is so much potential in Australia's housing stock. Thanks, everyone.